All right. Cool. Great. How is everyone today? Okay. Just okay? Cool. Well, I'm going to try to boost that a little bit today. Uh, we have an exciting lecture for you today. Uh, a couple of quick announcements before we get started. As you know, homework three is due tomorrow night. Um, so please come to office hours today at 5.30 if you have any last minute questions about homework three. Uh, if you email me questions, I'll do my best to answer them in a timely fashion, but uh, please use uh, office hours to ask any questions you have. And I can stay a little bit later today if, there's, uh, you know, if it runs long. Um, also keep an eye out for announcements. One second, this is kind of right here. Okay, there we go. Uh, keep an eye out for announcements um, over the next couple of days. I may reschedule some things in the course to give you a bit more time to work on your course projects, which may involve uh, moving HECRAS up a little bit in terms of the course schedule. Uh, so just keep an eye out for announcements regarding anything uh, on the course schedule, okay? Are there any questions uh, before I move on? Any questions about course logistics or general questions about homework three uh, that may benefit the class? Nothing. Uh, I did get a few. Oh, yes. Um, okay, so uh, for the uh, drainage network and uh, uh, like stream or uh, what is it, uh, stormwater, like that exceed the 5,000, mm -hmm. um, are, are we expected to uh, extract that or are we going to okay. Yeah, so extract it to a, a vector polyline file. So there'll be instructions for doing that. And then- Oh, I was wondering, like, uh, like, do we extract the amount that's in the subset? Like the the uh, subcatchment that we're interested in, or? If it, doesn't, if it doesn't specify, you can do either one. Yeah, if it doesn't specify, you can do it either way. Uh, just do uh, however you think looks best. So uh, with that, let's just quickly review what we talked about last time. So in the last class, uh, so we're, we're gonna transition now back into a little bit more urban drainage design. Um, last, last class, we, covered curb and inlet design. So curb inlet design, uh, we talked about design procedures for uh, designing the curb inlets that are gonna intercept the flow from gutters. Uh, we talked about on-grade inlet design in particular. We're gonna skip sump and sag inlets because the design procedure is very similar, but it will be in the notes uh, if you decide you want to learn more about that subject. Very similar to on-grade inlets. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about a different kind of design problem. Um, so we talked about curbs and gutters. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is the storm sewer system that the curbs and gutters feed into and how to design those storm sewers to uh, essentially prevent, prevent flooding. Okay. So this is kind of an interesting problem compared to what you've been looking at before because Rather than designing individual components of the urban drainage infrastructure in isolation, storm sewer design is kind of a systems problem. Okay, so when you're looking at the design of pipes in a storm sewer, uh, for instance, uh, you have to accommodate not only the flow that's coming in locally, but also the flow that's arriving from anywhere upstream in the network as well. So you'll get rainfall falling in from upstream locations, that flow will make its way down. And so the design of an individual pipe will depend not only on the local conditions, but rather the entire system. So you have to design the entire system at once as opposed to uh, individual infrastructure components. And kind of the central, the central design problem we're gonna be looking at is how to size stormwater pipes to accommodate the flows arriving from across the sewer network, okay? And kind of the central simplifying assumption we're going to use is um, a method called the rational method. Okay. And what this is essentially going to do is we're going to assume that the peak discharge Q in our stormwater pipes are proportional to the contributing area. So this was essentially the contributing 
area of the watershed upstream, uh, and this will be in units of length squared, times the rainfall intensity. This is in units of length per unit time, times some runoff coefficient. Okay, and this will be unitless. And note here that we're interested in the peak discharge, which is in units of length cubed per unit time. So we've looked at rainfall runoff modeling before, um, and we looked at methods that were more sophisticated than this. So why are we using such a simple method for uh, storm sewer design when we have things like, you know, for instance, green amps, when we have uh, unit hydrographs that we can use? Well, often we only need to know what the peak discharge is. And so you can essentially create an argument for using the rational method as follows, right? Um, let's say we have a watershed and we can treat the watershed as if it is a giant reservoir. Okay, so maybe it has some streams in it or something and it has some flow downstream coming out Q and some rainfall coming in, which I'll call uh, I. Okay, so what happens, let's take a look at just the hydrograph of the discharge coming downstream. Let's say we have Q here and T on the x-axis. So what happens if it just keeps raining and raining forever? Let's say it has, rains at a constant rainfall intensity I, and that just uh, kind of continues forever. What will the hydrograph look like at the downstream end? If we were to draw it here. Uh, who wants to, uh, you wanna go? Um, so I guess it would increase until it gets to the max, whatever it like equalizes. Right, forever. right. So it will eventually, it'll rise up at first, and then it'll eventually reach kind of a saturation or equilibrium point, okay, where the rainfall rate coming in is equal to the flow rate coming out. So I'll write that this is this point here. We have equilibrium where rainfall coming in, rainfall rate coming in is equal to the discharge out. Okay, so when a, when a watershed essentially reaches steady state, if there's some constant rainfall input, uh, it'll eventually reach a state where the discharge coming out is equal to the rainfall rate coming in. And that will be the peak discharge for that rainfall event. Uh, does anyone remember what the time is called when the, when the discharge reaches equilibrium? Does anyone remember what that time is called? Yeah, time of concentration. So the time of concentration, if we were to draw a, a line here representing the peak discharge, TC or the time of concentration, is the time it takes for a water droplet landing at the hydrologically most distant part of the watershed to make it to the outlet. In other words, it also represents the time at which for a constant rainfall input, you will have the entire watershed contributing to the discharge downstream. Or in other words, for a constant rainfall event, it will represent the time at which you achieve the peak discharge. And that's essentially the argument that we're going to be using for this storm sewer design process. Okay, we're going to be designing for that peak discharge when the entire watershed is contributing uh, to the flow at the outlet. Okay, are there any are there any questions on this design uh, assumption we created here? Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to give you the design procedure for storm sewers. So this is kind of a a step by step process that you can use to design uh, storm sewer diameters needed to achieve a given discharge and thus uh, present. Uh, prevent overflows and flooding. So uh, I'll leave this up in the notes. You don't need to write all of this down. I'm just going to go through each of these steps. So this is kind of a procedure that's 
still often used. Um, more commonly nowadays for larger cities, in order to design stormwater sewer pipes, you'll need to use a model like uh, SWIM, for instance, the EPA stormwater management model. Um, but this, this process gives you kind of a first, uh, a first approximation of what the storm sewer pipes should be. And it's still often used for uh, design of smaller sewer sheds. Okay, so the design procedure uh, is as follows. So first you start at the most upstream inlet. So let's say you have a, a sewer shed that looks something like this. You start at the most upstream inlet and we're going to be designing the pipe immediately downstream of that inlet. So you start at the most upstream inlet. I'm just gonna circle it there. You delineate the watershed for this inlet to determine the contributing area and the runoff coefficient. So uh, in this case, that would be similar to the procedure you're using in homework three. You delineate the watershed and you use land cover data to approximate the uh, runoff coefficient. Next, you compute the time of concentration for that contributing area, which you can get essentially from the longest path within that catchment. Fourth, and this is kind of the interesting step, you assume that the rainfall duration um, TD is equivalent to the time of concentration and you use an IDF curve to compute the rainfall intensity. Okay, so that's kind of an interesting assumption. Um, why do you think that that assumption is justified? Why would, it, why, would, why would we want to set the rainfall duration to equal the time of concentration? Does anyone have any ideas why we might want to do that? Yes? Right. So, so we're essentially designing for the peak discharge that will be achieved uh, for a given storm event of a given recurrence interval. So um, at the time of con concentration, all of the upstream watershed will be contributing to the flow at the outlet. Uh, and so we want to design for um, essentially the peak, the peak discharge, which corresponds to a rainfall duration equal to the time of concentration. Okay. A rainfall duration greater than the time of concentration uh, won't lead to any higher peak discharge. Okay. So we assume a rainfall duration equal to the time of concentration, and we compute the rainfall intensity I from some IDF relationship. Okay, next, after that, we use the rational method. So Q is equal to I times the sum of the uh, contributing areas times the uh, runoff coefficients for the upstream catchments for that inlet. Let me just write that down. So these are runoff coefficients. These are areas. You're taking the sum of those for the inlet and you're multiplying it by the rainfall intensity that we just computed from our IDF relationship. Okay. So next we use Manning's equation to compute. So, so essentially in the previous step, we computed the peak flow that's going to go through the pipe for our design storm. Next, we use Manning's equation to compute the diameter D of the pipe uh, needed to accommodate that uh, peak discharge. We choose the next larger available pipe size and commonly available pipe sizes that are available commercially. Next, we compute the flow velocity in the pipe. So A, in this case, uh, this is the cross-sectional area of the pipe. And Q is the discharge in the pipe. U is the velocity of flow in the pipe. Next, we compute the travel time in the sewer pipe, TS, which will be equal to the length of the pipe divided by the velocity of flow in the pipe. Okay, and finally, we move on to the next downstream inlet and repeat. So, why, why do we need to know the travel time in the sewer pipe, do you think? 
So note that we're, we're applying this process to an inlet upstream. Okay, we compute the diameter needed for the pipe immediately downstream of that inlet. And then we move on to the next, we move on to the next inlet downstream. Why might we need to know the travel time in the sewer pipe? Yes. It'll be sharing the capacity, but what part, what part of this procedure do we need to know the travel time for? Time of concentration, right? So for the next for the next inlet downstream, the time of concentration will include both the travel time uh, from this inlet here, as well as the travel time through this pipe. Okay, so when you're computing the time of concentration for the second pipe in sequence, you need to add up those two times together. Okay, great. Are there any questions? Um, so this is. Um, I've just listed out the steps of the procedure. I'm gonna go through an example that's going to make it much more clear. Uh, sometimes it's easier just to do an example as opposed to reading uh, the instructions, just like playing cards or something. Um, but are there any questions just in the general procedure before I move on to the example? Yes. Um, do you know anything about just where the rain is entering the pipeline? Is it only coming from like the top of the system or is it coming in like over the entire ocean? So let's look at this, let's look at this drawing here. So each of these inlets will have a watershed associated with it. So this, this inlet here might have this watershed. This inlet here will have maybe this watershed here. So it'll be fed both by this watershed here as well as this watershed here. So the flow from this watershed will go into this inlet and it'll travel down the pipe to the second one, but the second inlet will also be fed by its own watershed. Okay. And that'll kind of proceed recursively as you go down the system. Okay, great question. Are there any other kind of conceptual questions before we move on? Yes. Uh, it's because, so let's say we're at the second inlet here and we wanna compute the discharge coming into that second inlet. So we have for this first watershed, we have its own CA, so C1A1. And then for this watershed here, we also have its own CA. So if we want to compute the total discharge, we multiply I times C1A1 plus I times C2A2. Yeah, just assuming they're both getting the same rainfall. Very good questions. Uh, are there any other kind of conceptual questions before we do a quick example? Any other questions? Cool. So let's go ahead and do an example uh, just for a simple case. Let's do a quick example. And what we're going to do is we are going to design the sewer pipe diameters. Uh, for a two year storm event. And we're going to use a IDF curve that I'm going to give you. And we're going to design the sewer pipe diameters for a simple network that looks like the following. Uh, so let's say we have an inlet here. This is inlet one. We have another inlet here, which I will call inlet two. And we have kind of a terminating inlet. I'll just call this the outlet of the sewer shed. So inlet one flows downstream to inlet two and inlet two flows to inlet three. And we're interested in designing the diameters for this pipe as well as for this pipe. So I'll call this uh, pipe going from one to two and this pipe here going from two to three, okay? Um, each pipe will have a length of 500 meters. And let's say our Manning's roughness is equal to uh, 0 0.014. Okay, 
And as I mentioned, each one of these inlets has its own watershed. So the watershed for inlet one might look something like this. Let's call this watershed one. The watershed for inlet two will look something like this. Okay, let's call this watershed two. And note that because um, you know the inlet one feeds into inlet two, the flow going into inlet two will also include the flow from watershed one. Uh, but we're just treating these as being kind of separate sub catchments or separate sub basins right now. Um, inlet three will also have its own watershed, but we don't really care about it that much because we don't need to design the pipe coming out of inlet three. So we're only interested in the pipe going from one to two and the pipe going from two to three. Okay, so we don't really need any information about the contributing area for inlet three. And we also have the following parameters for each of these uh, inlets. So let's say we have our catchment number. We have, I'll call this the ground elevation or Z of the inlet, and this is in meters. We have the area of the catchment, which will be in square kilometers. We have the runoff coefficient C, which is unitless. And we have what's called the overland flow time, uh, and this will be in minutes. Okay, so for catchment one, or the inlet elevation is at 100 meters above sea level. I'll just write 100 because the unit's up there. We'll say that the area of catchment one is 0 0.005 square kilometers. The runoff coefficient is 0 0.5. And the overland flow time, which is the flow across this catchment to the inlet, is 10 minutes. Okay. Yes? Is that different from the ground So you'll see. Um, so for, for inlet one, it turns out to be equal to the time of concentration. For inlet two, um, it'll also include the travel time in the pipe. Or it's also possible that if catchment two has a longer overland flow time, then the flow from catchment one plus the sewer pipe, then that will be the time of concentration. So the time of concentration is the long, the time of the longest flow path. Yeah. So we have catchment one, um, inlet elevation 100 meters, um, following other parameters as well. Um, for catchment two, right here, we have that the ground elevation of the inlet is 97 meters, area of 0 0.006 square kilometers runoff coefficient of 0 0.6 and overland flow time of five minutes. Okay, so note the overland flow time is the longest flow time from catchment two to inlet two. And for our inlet three, let's just say the ground elevation of the inlet is 95 meters and we don't uh, need this other information because we don't need to design the pipe coming out of inlet three. Okay, so essentially the design procedure is as follows. So we go through each catchment, we compute the discharge uh, going into the pipe for that catchment. We then find the pipe diameter needed to accommodate that discharge. Um, we compute the velocity of the flow in that pipe. From that, we can get the travel time in the pipe. And then after we get all of those parameters, we go down to the next pipe in sequence and then compute the pipe diameter again. Okay, so I'm gonna go through that process here. Um, I'm gonna go through it for this example catchment. And then after that, I'm going to give you an example problem to work on that's a little bit more uh, complex, okay? Okay, so we're going to follow that procedure. Let's start with catchment one. Okay, so first what we need to do is we need to compute the discharge in this pipe, our pipe going from inlet one to inlet two. Okay, so the first thing we can do is we know that our discharge is equal to um, I times the sum of C times A for all of our contributing areas. 
So in this case, it'll just be equal to I times C times A because there's only one contributing area for our catchment one. Okay, so first we can, we can compute this CA. We have from our table that C is 0 0.5 and our area is 0 0.005 uh, square kilometers. And that evaluates to 0 0.0025 uh, square kilometers is CA. Okay, so next we need to go to our IDF curve and find our rainfall intensity corresponding to our time of concentration. So what is our time of concentration for catchment one? Yes, 10 minutes. So there's nothing else feeding into catchment one. So we can just use the overland flow time as our time of concentration. So that's the time of the longest flow path. Okay, so we have time of concentration of 10 minutes, which is equal to our rainfall duration. So I'm gonna go and use uh, an IDF curve that I've posted online. Okay, so if you go under files, uh, activities, we have AZ IDF curve. Uh, let's go and find our rainfall intensity for a two year storm for a rainfall event with a duration of 10 minutes. If we follow this line up, we'll see that it's about three inches per hour. So let's just use three inches per hour. Okay, our rainfall intensity is equal to three inches per hour. Okay, and this is approximately equal to 76.2 millimeters per hour. I'll just give you uh, that, that conversion. Okay, so from that, we can compute the discharge in our pipe. We have that Q is equal to I times sum of CA. Okay, and this is equal to 76.2 millimeters per hour times 0 0.0025 square kilometers. And then we need to do a bunch of unit conversions. So we have that we have uh, 1,000 meters per kilometer squared times one meter for 1,000 meters. Uh, sorry, that should be uh, millimeters. And we have one hour for every 3,600 seconds. And if we compute that out, we get a discharge of 0 0.053 cubic meters per second. Are there any questions on how I did that? Okay, so that is our that is our design discharge for our pipe going from inlet one to inlet two. Okay, so next we need to compute the diameter needed to accommodate this flow. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that the pipe is flowing completely full, and we're going to find the diameter needed to accommodate this discharge. Okay, we can do that using Manning's equation. So from Manning's equation, we have that our discharge Q is equal to phi over N times A, the area, cross-sectional area, times hydraulic radius to the two-thirds power times the bottom slope to the one-half power. If we're using a circular pipe, we have that this simplifies to our area is pi times the diameter squared over four. And our hydraulic radius is simply this area divided by um, pi times the diameter, because it's the area over the wetted perimeter. So that will evaluate to diameter divided by four to the two thirds power. Okay. Um, if we kind of smush all of these constants together, what we'll end up with is Q is equal to 0 0.311 times phi over N times the bottom slope to the one half power 
times the diameter to the eight thirds power. And if we just rearrange this, we can get an expression for the diameter. The diameter will be equal to uh, the discharge Q times Manning's roughness divided by 0 0.311 times phi times the square root of the bottom slope all to the 3 eighths power. Okay, so we're gonna use this, um, this, uh, this expression for diameter. We're gonna save this because we're gonna use it later as well. Uh, but this relates the diameter of a circular pipe to the peak discharge that it can accommodate without overflowing. Okay, so our objective here is to make sure that none of the pipes are overflowing. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and plug in numbers here. What was our Q again? What was our Q? It was 0 0.053. So we have 0 0.053 cubic meters per second. Our N was how much? 0 0.014. On the bottom, we have 0 0.311. Um, we're working in metric, so our phi just goes to one. And what is the bottom slope? Do we have that? What's the bottom slope? Sorry? So what is the what is the delta z between one and two? Three. So we'll put in three. And how long are the pipes? Five hundred meters. So the bottom slope will be three divided by five hundred. Great. And we can compute this. The diameter is ends up being zero point two seven meters. And we need to round this up to the next available commercial pipe size. Uh, in metric, this usually is in increments of 100 millimeters. So we're going to round this up to 0 0.3 meters. Okay, so that is our diameter for the first pipe. But we're not done yet. Um, so we have the diameter. What's the next step? What's the next step in our procedure? Right, we need to compute the velocity and we can compute the velocity by doing what? U is equal to what divided by what? Q over A, so that'll be equal to 0 0.053 cubic meters per second divided by, uh, and we have pi D squared over four. So let me just write this out. This is Q divided by pi D squared over four. So this will be divided by, uh, well, I won't write it out all the way, um, but we can evaluate this. And if we evaluate this expression, we end up with 0 0.75 meters per second. And what's our final step for this, uh, for this pipe? Travel time. Yes, so we have to compute the travel time. The travel time in the pipe is equal to the length divided by the velocity. Uh, and so we have 500 meters divided by 0 0.75 meters per second. Uh, that'll evaluate into about 667 seconds or about 11 minutes. Okay. So we're done with the first pipe. Now we can move on to the second pipe and this one will take uh, not quite as long. The procedure is very similar to the first one. So we've designed this pipe here. We know that L, oh, sorry, D12 is equal to 0 0.3 meters. Okay, we're going to go back to catchment two and we're going to do the same procedure over again. So for catchment two, We have, first we have to compute the C2 times A2. So the runoff coefficient for the second catchment times the area of the second catchment. Uh, 
this is equal to 0 0.6 for our runoff coefficient times 0 0.006 uh, square kilometers, right? And this will give us a value of 0 0.0036. Okay. Uh, what about the sum of CA? What will this be? We have from our previous catchment, our C1A1 was equal to 0 0.0025 kilometers squared. So we're just going to add those two together. So sum of CA will be 0 0.0025 kilometers squared plus 0 0.0036 kilometers squared. Uh, and that will give us a value of 0 0.0061 kilometers squared. Okay. So next we have to compute the discharge, which means we need to find the rainfall intensity. Um, so what is our rainfall duration? What is our time of concentration here? Does anyone have a guess? Let's go back to the table. So we have that catchment one has an overland flow time of 10 minutes. We have that catchment two has an overland flow time of five minutes. And what was our travel time in this sewer pipe? 11 minutes. So what is the time of concentration for inlet two? 21 minutes, how did you get that? How'd you get that? Right. So what about the overland flow time for catchment two? Where does that fit in? It happens during the first 10 minutes. Yeah. So this overland flow time doesn't matter. What we care about is the time of travel of the longest path, which was um, catchment one plus the flow time in this pipe. So that's exactly right. The time of concentration is equal to 11 minutes. Sorry, uh, uh, 21 minutes. So this is equal to, our time of concentration is equal to um, TO at catchment one plus TS from one to two, which is equal to 10 plus 11 minutes, which is equal to 21 minutes. So that's probably the trickiest part in this problem is figuring out what the time of concentration is. Um, but uh, you've managed to do it uh, fairly quickly. So now that we have that time of concentration, let's go back to our IDF curve. Uh, we have a time of concentration of 21 minutes. So we go to our IDF curve, we find duration of about 21 minutes and we go up and we find that for a two year storm event, the rainfall intensity is about two inches per hour. And so our intensity I is uh, about two inches per hour. And this is equal to about 50.8 millimeters per hour. Okay, so finishing this up, we have Q is equal to I times the sum of CA. This will be 50.8 millimeters per hour times, what is our sum of CA? Point zero zero six one, uh, and that is in square kilometers. And then we do all your, our unit conversions. So we have 1,000 meters uh, per kilometer squared times one meter for every 1,000 millimeters times one hour for every 3,600 seconds. Okay. And what we get is a discharge of 0. 0.086 uh, cubic meters per second. Great. Okay. From that, we can go back to our equation for the diameter. 
we can plug in our values again. So plugging in Q, we have 0 0.06. I'm just going to leave out the units. Sorry, Becky. Um, we have a Manning's roughness of 0 0.014. It takes a while to write them down. Um, we have a constant in the bottom of 0 0.311. And we have our slope. What is our, what is our slope? No. Nope. Let's go back to the table. So 97 minus 95 is two divided by our length is 500 meters. So we get two divided by 500, uh, all to the three eighths power. And this will evaluate to 0 0.35 meters. And we can round that up uh, to about 0 0.4 meters is our pipe diameter. Okay, and do we have to do anything else? Do we have to do anything else? Nope, so this is the last pipe we had to design. So we can end right here. Yay, cool. It's a bit long, but uh, not, not, too, not too difficult. Right, so we have our pipe diameter from one to two is 0 0.3 meters. Our pipe diameter from two to three is 0 0.4 meters. Are there any questions on this design procedure before we uh, move on? No? Okay, so I wanted to know, so for this case, we have just a single branch. Um, for networks with more complicated branching structure, you have to be careful about the order in which you're doing this. So I'll write four branching networks. Okay, so let's say we have a network that looks like this. Okay. Something like this. Okay, so let's say we start with, let's say we start with this most upstream inlet here. So when we're doing this process, we first have to delineate the watershed for this inlet. Okay, we do that whole procedure. We move to the next inlet downstream. Then we delineate its watershed and do the same procedure. What do we do now when we get to this inlet? Yeah, we got to go back up to this one first. So we could have picked this one as well, but let's just say we go back to this one first. We delineate its watershed, go through the whole procedure, go down again, delineate this watershed, and so on and so on. And now once we have both of these branches, we can continue with this, with this inlet here. And so we'll delineate its watershed, we'll go down, and then just as before, before we can do this one, we have to go back up here, delineate this watershed, delineate this watershed. And then finally, we can continue here. So the rough order is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and finally nine. Okay. So just be careful about the order you're doing it in. Now note that this ordering is not unique. You could have started with this one and then gone to this one and then gone to this one. Um, but just note that before you reach any branching point, you have to have uh, treated both of the upstream branches. Okay. Well, are there any questions before I move on? No, good. All right, so I'm gonna give you uh, an example to work on that's a bit trickier, and this will be very similar to a problem in homework four. So I will uh, give you a chance to work on this. It's kind of a, just a straightforward extension of the example we just did. Okay, so now let's say we have uh, a similar catchment. So we have our three original inlets from before. But now we have, uh, sorry, let me call this one four. 
So we have our inlets for, but now we have another inlet coming in like this. Okay, so this is inlet three. Uh, and just like before, one has its own watershed, which we'll call watershed one. Uh, three has its own watershed, which we'll call three. Two has its own watershed, which we'll call two. And then the watershed for four, we don't really care about because we're not designing the pipe that comes out of it. Okay. Um, so we'll use the exact same parameters as before for catchments one and two, but for catchment three, we will use the following parameters. So we'll have that the elevation of the inlet is equal to 99 meters above sea level. The area, so the area of catchment three will be equal to 0 0.004 square kilometers. The runoff coefficient for catchment three is 0 0.7. And the overland flow time for catchment three is 15 minutes. Okay, so what we're gonna do, and I'm not sure we're gonna have time for both of these, but what I want you to do is first design pipe two, uh, design pipe three to two. So I want you to design this pipe here. And second, design pipe uh, two to four. Okay, and I'll put up the uh, IDF curve uh, from before as you're working on this uh, so that you can use that resource, okay? So I'll give you a couple of seconds to write this down. And then for the remainder of the class, I will let you work on this problem. Uh, after you finish one, let me know and I will come back and just uh, make sure we all have the same answers. And then we will go on to uh, part two. Okay, so this is very similar to a homework problem you're gonna be doing. So I'd recommend taking a look at it now. Um, and I will go ahead and put up the IDF curve as soon as you get all of this written down and we will come around and uh, uh, help you out as you're working on it. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so uh, let me write that down. Um, the length is 500 meters for all pipes. And the roughness is equal to 0 0.014 for all pipes. All right. Does anyone does anyone have a diameter? Uh, does anyone have a diameter for this network yet? Uh, for two to three? Sorry, for three to two. Any guesses? Okay, so I only have five minutes left. So I want to uh, go ahead and just kind of give the answers for this one, and then I'm going to check in uh, on Tuesday for the last part of the problem because. It's important to understand this network for finishing homework four, which I will post tomorrow. Um, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and just give answers for for design of pipe three to two. Okay, uh, so for for three to two, what did you get for the rainfall intensity? So this one is kind of kind of be a little bit different between people because it's based on vision, but uh, what what intensity? Sorry? Yeah, like around, I'd say it's around 2.3 to 2.5 right, inches per hour. Remember to convert that to millimeters uh, when you go to do the computation. So I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna use 2.3 for the rest of these computations. Um, what, what's the range of values we got for the discharge? Yeah, so like about 0 0.04 something. I'm gonna say 0 0.045 cubic meters per second. Okay, and from that, what, what diameter did you get? Yeah, so like, uh, can, I, can I, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing. Can someone? 
Yeah, like about some range of 0.25 to 0.3. So let's say about like 0 0.28 or something like that. Um, and if we round that up, we get 0 0.3 meters. Okay, for the velocity, I'm just gonna say we have about 0 0.642 meters per second. And for the sewer travel time, what's kind of the approximate value that you got if you got this far? Didn't get that far? Yeah, like around 12 or 13 minutes. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna write 13 minutes up here just to keep it consistent. Um, so I don't have time for you to work on the second question, but I wanted to make a quick note about the time of concentration for the final leg of the journey, essentially. So what would the time of concentration be for inlet, uh, for the design of pipe two to four? Sorry, let's let's look at the different um, let's look at the different times. Okay, so for catchment one, we have a travel time of about ten minutes. Uh, for catchment three, we have a travel time of about fifteen minutes. The sewer travel time here in what was the sewer travel time from one to two? Does anyone remember? Eleven. And what was the sewer travel time from two to three or from three to two? Yeah, so let's go 13. So what is, oh, and also for, for catchment two, you also have a travel time of five minutes. So I'll just say that's for this catchment. So what is the time of concentration for inlet two to four? Yeah, so it'll be 13 plus 15 because that's the longest travel time. So let me just write that down. Uh, this will be 13 plus 15 is equal to 28 minutes. Okay, so that's kind of the trickiest part of this problem. Remember that when you go to do your homework, uh, which I will post uh, tomorrow. Aside from that, have a great weekend and uh, arrive refreshed next week for another exciting lecture.